Green Arrow is a fictional superhero who appears in comic books published by DC Comics. Created by Mort Weisinger and designed by George Papp, he first appeared in More Fun Comics No. 73 in November 1941. His real name is Oliver Jonas Queen, a wealthy businessman and owner of Queen Industries who is also a well-known celebrity in Star City. Sometimes shown dressed like the character Robin Hood, Green Arrow is an archer who uses his skills to fight crime in his home cities of Star City and Seattle, as well as alongside his fellow superheroes as a member of the Justice League. Though much less frequently used in modern stories, he also deploys a range of trick arrows with various special functions, such as glue, explosive tipped, grappling hook, flash grenade, tear gas and even kryptonite arrows for use in a range of special situations. At the time of his debut, Green Arrow functioned in many ways as an archery-themed analogue of the very popular Batman character, but writers at DC subsequently developed him into a voice of left-wing politics very much distinct in character from Batman. Green Arrow enjoyed moderate success in his early years, becoming the cover feature of More Fun, as well as having occasional appearances in other comics. Throughout his first 25 years, however, the character never enjoyed greater popularity. In the late 1960s, writer Denny O'Neill, inspired by the character's dramatic visual redesign by Neil Adams, chose to have him lose his fortune, giving him the then unique role of a streetwise crusader for the working class and the disadvantaged. In 1970, he was paired with a more law and order oriented hero, Green Lantern, in a groundbreaking, socially conscious comic book series. Since then, he has been popular among comic book fans, and most writers have taken an urban, gritty approach to the character. The character was killed off in the 1990s and replaced by a new character, Oliver's son Connor Hawk. Connor, however, proved a less popular character, and the original Oliver Queen character was resurrected in the 2001 Quiver storyline by writer Kevin Smith. In the 2000s, the character has been featured in bigger storylines focusing on Green Arrow and Black Canary, such as the DC event The Green Arrow, Black Canary Wedding and the high-profile Justice League, Cry for Justice storyline, prior to the character's relaunch alongside most of DC's properties in 2011. Green Arrow was not initially a well-known character outside of comic book fandom, he had appeared in a single episode of the animated series Super Friends in 1973. In the 2000s, the character appeared in a number of DC television properties, including the animated series Justice League Unlimited, Young Justice, The Batman and Batman, the Brave and the Bold, and several DC Universe animated original movies. In live action, he appeared in the series Smallville, played by actor Justin Hartley, and became a core cast member. In 2012, the live action series Arrow debuted on The CW, in which the title character is portrayed by Stephen Amell, and launching several spin off series, becoming the starting point for a DC Comics shared television universe called The Arrowverse. <laughs> Publication history Topic. Beginnings, 1941–1968 
Green Arrow and Speedy first appeared in More Fun Comics No. 73 cover dated November 1941, which was illustrated by artist George Papp. When Mort Weisinger was creating the character, aside from the obvious allusions to Robin Hood, he took inspiration from a movie serial, The Green Archer, based on the novel by Edgar Wallace. He retooled the concept into a superhero archer with obvious Batman influences. These include Green Arrow's sidekick Speedy, his use of an arrow car and arrow plane for transportation, his use of an arrow cave as his headquarters, his alter ego as a wealthy playboy, the use of an arrow signal to summon him, as well as a clown like arch foe named Bull's Eye, similar to Batman's arch foe, the Joker. His and Speedy's first origin stories were told in More Fun Comics No. 89. Green Arrow ran as a backup feature in More Fun Comics until the mid-1940s, then in Adventure Comics between 1946 and 1960. Green Arrow and Speedy also appeared in various issues of World's Finest Comics until issue number 140 1964. The Green Arrow and Speedy feature was one of five backup features to be promoted in one of the earliest team-up books, Leading Comics. He was one of the few DC characters to keep going after the golden age of comic books. His longevity was due to the influence of creator Mort Weisinger, who kept him as a backup feature to the headlining Superboy, first in more fun comics and then adventure comics, since Superman-related titles were all but guaranteed success during this period. Green Arrow endured the 1940s and 1950s relatively unchanged, outlasting most of his Golden Age contemporaries. As a result, he avoided being revived and reimagined for the Silver Age, as The Flash, Green Lantern, and others were. Aside from sharing adventure comics with him, issue number 258 featured an encounter between a younger Oliver Queen and Superboy. The Green Arrow and Speedy feature during this period included a short run in 1958 written by Dick and Dave Wood and drawn by Jack Kirby. For much of this period, Green Arrow's adventures were written by France Heron, who was the character's primary scripter 1947-1963. Topic: Neil Adams and Dennis O'Neill, 1969 to 1983. In 1969, artist Neil Adams updated the character's visual appearance by giving him a Van Dyke beard and costume of his own design in The Brave and the Bold number no. 85, August September 1969. Writer Dennis O'Neill followed up on Green Arrow's new appearance by completely remaking the character's attitude in Justice League of America No. 75 cover dated November 1969, having Oliver Queen lose his fortune and become an outspoken advocate of the underprivileged and the political left wing. The story also turned teammate Black Canary into a love interest for Queen. In the early 1970s, Green Arrow became a co-feature with Green Lantern Hal Jordan in an acclaimed series of stories by O'Neill and Adams that dealt with various social and political issues. The two co-stars served to represent contrasting socio-political viewpoints. Green Arrow spoke for radical change while Green Lantern was an establishment liberal figure, wanting to work within existing institutions of government and law. 
Queen convinces Jordan to see beyond his strict obedience to the Green Lantern Corps, to help those who were neglected or discriminated against. O'Neill explained, He would be a hot tempered anarchist to contrast with the cerebral, sedate model citizen who was Green Lantern. The duo embark on a quest in a beat-up pickup truck to «find America», along the way witnessing the problems of corruption, racism, pollution, as well as overpopulation confronting the nation. One story in issues hash 78 to 79 was even widely interpreted as an allegory for the Manson family cult murders, though O'Neill has emphasized that the story was about the authoritarian left and not Manson. In Green Lantern, volume. 2 hash 85 to 86 it was revealed that Green Arrow's ward, Speedy, was addicted to heroin. Speedy overcame his addiction with the help of the Black Canary. This story prompted a massive public reaction, including a congratulatory letter from the mayor of New York, John Lindsay. However, Green Lantern sales had been in a major decline at the time Green Arrow was brought on as co-star, and the O'Neill, Adams stories failed to revive them. Green Lantern was cancelled with issue number 89 April, May 1972, and the climactic story arc of the Green Lantern, Green Arrow series was published as a backup feature in The Flash number 217 through number 219. In sharp contrast to the socially relevant tales which preceded it, this story centered on emotional themes, with Green Arrow struggling to deal with the guilt of having killed a man. Afterwards Green Arrow appeared in solo stories run as backups in action comics, starting with number 421. Elliot S. Magan, who had made his comics debut with a Green Arrow story published in Green Lantern, Volume 2, Number 87, was Green Arrow's writer for the next several years. In 1976, the Green Lantern, Green Arrow title was relaunched, without the socially conscious themes of the original series, with O'Neill writing and Mike Grell drawing. After the title moved to Solo Green Lantern Stories, Solo Green Arrow Stories appeared in World's Finest Comics. In his solo series, Oliver landed a job as a newspaper columnist, which allowed him to articulate his political beliefs in a more public field. In World's Finest No. 255 1979, Queen unsuccessfully ran for mayor of Star City. In May through August 1983, Green Arrow appeared for the first time in his own comic book, a four-issue limited series. This miniseries introduced a running rivalry between Green Arrow and the supervillain Count Vertigo. In 1985, the Earth-2 Green Arrow died in the Crisis on Infinite Earths, still wearing red boots and gloves. The Golden Age Earth-2 character had been retconned as a time-lost member of the original Seven Soldiers of Victory superhero team, recovered by the Justice League and Justice Society. After the crisis, the Earth-2 Green Arrow and Speedy were retconned out of existence altogether, given the end of DC's former multiverse. <laughs> Longbow Hunters, Mike Grell ongoing In 1987, DC Comics launched the character into a new ongoing title as part of their mature audience comic line. Written and illustrated by Mike Grell, the revamp was launched with Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunters miniseries. 
In this three-issue prestige format limited series, a routine adventure against a group of drug runners led to tragedy as the Black Canary was captured and brutally tortured. In response, Oliver murdered his girlfriend's attackers. The miniseries also introduced the enigmatic female Japanese archer, Shado, whose family had suffered in a World War II internment camp. Shado later raped Oliver and became pregnant by him, producing a son named Robert after his father. Under Grell, Green Arrow abandoned the use of his trademark gadget arrows and relocated from Star City to Seattle, Washington. As the series was part of DC Comics' mature audience line, it took on a more gritty, violent, as well as urban tone, with Green Arrow often using deadly force against his enemies. Grell wrote the series for the first 80 issues, downplaying the superhero aspects of the characters. Oliver abandoned his mask and was never actually referred to as Green Arrow and Black Canary was never shown using her sonic scream power. Sometimes, this was explained as having lost it due to the events of the Longbow Hunters, though this was not consistent with her appearances in other titles published during this period. While crossover specials were conceived to allow other writers most notably Denny O'Neill, who wrote Batman and the mature audience comic The Question to use Green Arrow, Grell wrote him as largely isolated from the rest of the DC Universe, when other DC characters like longtime friend Hal Jordan also known as Green Lantern appeared, they did so in street clothes and used only their civilian names names, in place of the superhero community, Grell created his own supporting cast. In addition to Shado, Grell introduced Seattle Police Lieutenant Jim Cameron, who was disgusted with Green Arrow's vigilante actions including killing criminals, renegade CIA agent Greg Osborne, who began to monitor Queen's activities, as well as mercenary Eddie Fires, initially introduced as Queen's adversary, but later to become a companion of necessity when Green Arrow was forced to to leave Seattle after false accusations of aiding terrorists. Grell's run ended with Green Arrow No. 80, shortly after Dinah dumped Oliver. During this period, the writer also redefined the character's origin in the four-part 1992 limited series, Green Arrow, The Wonder Year. Grell portrayed Oliver Queen as a thrill seeker who inherits his family business at a very young age. Changed by his sojourn on the island, Oliver decided to take up crime fighting as a means of rebelling against his responsibilities. During his first adventure in Star City, Oliver meets an old flame, Brianna Stone, a former college radical who warns him if he continued to carry his bow, he would one day have to use it for real. Grell's limited series also established Queen's attraction toward dangerous women. Topic. Post Grell and characters' temporary death Once Grell left the series, DC almost immediately began restoring Green Arrow to the mainstream DC universe. His ongoing series, mostly written by Kelly Puckett and drawn by artist Jim Aparo, was removed from the mature audience line which had evolved into vertigo 
with number 63, prior to Grell's departure and Green Arrow began appearing in various superhero titles as a guest, most notably Green Lantern No. 47, which had Oliver aiding Green Lantern in rescuing his longtime girlfriend Carol Ferris and her family from one of Hal's enemies, as well as the 1994 DC Comics miniseries Zero Hour. In Zero Hour, where Hal Jordan seeks to remake the universe after the trauma of Coast City's destruction drives him to destroy the Green Lantern Corps to gain the power to remake the universe, Queen is forced to shoot his old friend at a pivotal moment. Now tightly integrated in the DC Universe, the character Connor Hawk was introduced and revealed as Oliver Queen's son from a previous relationship. In Green Arrow Hash 100-101, Queen infiltrated a group of eco-terrorists known as the Eden Corps and sacrificed his life in order to prevent the group from detonating a bomb that would destroy the city of Metropolis. Superman attempted to intervene, but ultimately did not after Queen rebuked him for suggesting that Queen allow him to sever the arm attached to the bomb. The exchange between Queen and Superman pays tribute to Frank Miller's 1986 work The Dark Knight Returns. Queen later admits in the Quiver storyline where he is resurrected that he refused due to both his own issues at this point in his life and the more practical issue that he would be useless as an archer with one arm. Queen's death allowed the writers to shake up the status quo by making Connor Hawk a replacement Green Arrow. The series, now written by Chuck Dixon, would continue with Hawk as the main focus until issue number 137, when the series was cancelled. <laughs> Smith, Hester and Parks, Meltzer 2000–2004 Queen is revived in 2000's Green Arrow Volume 3 as part of the Quiver story arc, written by Kevin Smith and illustrated by Phil Hester and Andy Parks. It is revealed that Hal's resurrection of Oliver, seen on the very last page of Green Arrow No. 137, the final issue of the Oliver – Connor ongoing series was in reality a deliberately flawed one. In Hal's final hours before sacrificing his life to save the Earth during the final night, Hal speaks with Oliver's soul in the afterlife. The two agree to bring back a version of Oliver Queen, one without a soul so Oliver may properly stay in heaven and with no memory of the events of the Longbow Hunters miniseries or of the subsequent events that followed, up until his death, Oliver reasoning that things went wrong for him after the events that drove him to kill for the first time and feeling that the copy of him was restored at the best point in his life. For some years, this resurrected Oliver lives in Star City as a vigilante hero, completely under the radar of his other superhero friends, but eventually he is discovered and learns the truth of his resurrection, leaving the resurrected Oliver feeling uncertain about his state now that he knows he has no soul. His resurrection is eventually used by the grandfather of Stanley Dover in an attempt to gain power over the monster that Dover accidentally bound to his grandson, Dover intending to take Oliver's body possible only due to his lack of a soul and use his access to the JLA's resources to find the monster. 
At the climax of the story, Oliver's soul returns from heaven, re-inhabits his resurrected earthly form and helps his son Connor Hawk fight a horde of demons, the body of Oliver having made contact with his soul and convincing him to return to save their son. Dover is defeated and actually consumed by the beast, who then leaves of his own accord. Oliver also finds himself independently wealthy again, as Dover had transferred all his financial assets to Oliver in anticipation of taking over his body. He also picked up a new sidekick, Mia Dearden, who would become the new Speedy. Under Oliver's tutelage, after the resurrection storyline, Smith wrote a second and shorter arc involving a super powered serial killer, calling himself Onomatopoeia, who sought to claim Connor as his latest victim. Smith then left the title and Brad Meltzer took over as writer. Meltzer's single storyline for Green Arrow featured Oliver and his former sidekick, Roy Harper, reuniting and going on a cross-country road trip to pick up old possessions of Oliver's, most notably a spare Green Lantern power ring entrusted to him by Hal Jordan many years earlier. The story also revealed that Oliver knew all along that Connor was his son and was even present at his birth, but that Oliver ultimately abandoned Connor and his mother, because of his fear of the responsibilities of fatherhood. Meltzer's storyline would continue into the miniseries Green Lantern, Rebirth, which featured Oliver's attempts to use the ring against Sinistro presumed dead for several years before the ring is reclaimed by the reborn Hal Jordan. Meltzer went on to write the miniseries Identity Crisis, which heavily featured Green Arrow as one of the story's main characters, investigating the murder of Sue Dibney, the wife of the elongated man, and revealing that the League had been involved in mind-wiping various villains in the past to conceal their secret identities. During this time, the character also appeared in a number of other titles, such as the Justice League, when he is temporarily brought into a reserve league created by Batman after the original League is nearly killed by the powerful Gamemne, and Justice League Elite, where Oliver joins a Black Ops super team as the team's tactical consultant. His time in the Elite is notable for showing a brief affair with Dawn, the wife of the team's magical expert, Manitou Raven. <laughs> Judd Winnick, 2004–2008 Judd Winnick took over as Green Arrow's writer and made many changes. Mia Dearden, the new Speedy, was revealed to be HIV positive and attempts were made to expand Green Arrow's rogues gallery with Merlin the Archer, Constantine Dracon, as well as Danny Brickwell the Brick, joining the cast of existing Green Arrow villains such as the illusion casting Count Vertigo and the enigmatic Onomatopoeia, the latter of whom, himself, was a relatively recent addition. Other DC villains, such as the Riddler, made guest appearances throughout his run. 2006 saw the title along with other DC Comics titles jump one year later after the events in Infinite Crisis. Oliver, having once again amassed a large personal fortune, is the newly elected mayor of Star City, continuing his fight for justice both on the streets and within the political system. He also has a new costume, which appears to be a combination of the classic Neil Adams costume and the Mike Grell Longbow Hunters costume. 
In flashbacks, it is revealed that Oliver survived a near-fatal attack during the events of the Infinite Crisis, as well as used his recuperation time to retrain. He works with several expert instructors including a sensei known as NATAs, who also trained Deathstroke, and becomes proficient in several martial arts including the use of swords, which he makes use of on occasion during this time, and proves that he and his family are now formidable combatants when battling Deathstroke and later Batman's rogue protege Jason Todd. He is eventually forced to resign from his position as mayor after a scandal where he learns that he had been secretly funding the Outsiders, essentially a bounty hunter team at this point in their history, coupled with his uncertain position with the voting public, having never had much more than 50% of the city on his side at a time. Queen is convinced to resign his position in exchange for his successor leaving the various social aid organizations and resources he had established alone, although Ali was able to beat his opponent by resigning prior to the election and putting someone he trusted in charge of the city. The series concluded with Oliver proposing to Dinah, Black Canary. In 2007 Andy Diggle and Jock's Green Arrow, Year One presented the newest official version of his origin. Using concepts from previous iterations, Oliver Queen is a rich, thrill-seeking activist who is attacked, thrown overboard and washes up on an island where he learns of a smuggling operation. Upon witnessing the inhabitants' slave-like living conditions, he begins to take down the smugglers' operation. He eventually returns to civilization changed by his experiences. In the final part of the story, Oliver claims that a mutiny or the actions of a group of heroin dealers could be used as a cover story for what transpired, referencing the original Green Arrow origin story, as well as Mike Grell's version. Topic: <laughs> Green Arrow, Black Canary. After the end of the ongoing series, DC Comics published a four-part bi-monthly Black Canary miniseries in which Green Arrow teamed up with Black Canary to help get Sin into school and establish a new life. This series concluded with the Black Canary accepting his proposal. This resulted in DC Comics publishing three interconnected specials revolving around the Green Arrow, Black Canary wedding that tied into that month's countdown stories. These were the Black Canary Wedding Planner, JLA Wedding Special, as well as the Green Arrow, Black Canary Wedding Special. The wedding special worked as a lead in for a new Green Arrow, Black Canary series. At the conclusion of the wedding special, the Black Canary is forced to kill Green Arrow after he appears to go mad and attacks her. The new ongoing series picked up on this, quickly revealing that Green Arrow was alive the dead Green Arrow being an imposter and being held hostage by Athena. The Black Canary, Connor and Mia launch a rescue mission to save Green Arrow. As the team is united and on their way to safety, Connor is struck by a bullet meant for Oliver and is left in a vegetative state. While Connor rests, Oliver and Dinah go out and are officially married, since they had never actually been married in the wedding special, but they come home to find Connor has been kidnapped. This storyline led directly into the second arc that followed the rescue of Connor from a mysterious foe. Connor is eventually found, now having recovered thanks to manipulation by Dr. Savannah. 
With issue number 15, Andrew Kreisberg took over as the series writer. Topic: <laughs> Blackest Night. Oliver is transformed into a Black Lantern Corps member and attacks his former allies, notably his son, wife and sidekick. During the battle, Connor says he never really forgave his father, while Oliver's internal monologue reveals his thoughts, which express concerns for his family and disgust at his actions. The team managed to disable Oliver by freezing him with liquid nitrogen. Topic Cry for Justice and Rise and Fall in the Cry for Justice miniseries, JLA foe Prometheus destroys Star City, as part of a grand scheme to hurt the Justice League community of heroes. During the episode, the identity of the Green Arrow was nearly revealed by an old friend, Moreno. After tricking the Justice League into releasing him, Green Arrow tracks him down to his hidden lair and kills him with a single arrow right between the eyes. This murder, committed in secret, is what Oliver considers justice for the bombings, which also cost the life of Leon Harper, Roy Harper's Red Arrow daughter, who was killed in the bombing of Star City, and this immediately leads into the rise and fall story line, in which Oliver obsessively hunts other super-villains allied with Prometheus during the recent events, including Prometheus's former allies who were involved in the bombing. When his JLA comrades learn of this plot, they confront Green Arrow and he realizes he has crossed a line and turns himself in. Black Canary returns her wedding ring and declares their marriage over. The Green Arrow, Black Canary series ends during this story arc, as well as in the pages of Justice League, Rise and Fall special, Oliver is tried, but found not guilty as most of the jury sympathize with his motives. He is exiled from Star City's remains as a result, choosing to live in the mysterious forest which has grown at its center. Topic. Brightest Day Following the events of Blackest Night, Deadman was brought to the ruins of Star City by his White Ring. Powered by the Entity of Life on Earth, the Ring created a vast green forest, that instantly grew in the presence of the White Light, in much of what remained of Star City. Unbeknownst to the populace of Star City, Green Arrow returns and lives within the new forest, trying his best to protect a city still reeling from the death and destruction of Prometheus's attacks. With the law breaking down and numerous public figures being murdered, a new owner of Queen Industries, the result of a hostile takeover, arrives to enforce peace and rebuild the city. This self-proclaimed Queen has a connection to Green Arrow's father and claims to be upholding the Queen family legacy where Oliver failed. Topic. The New 52 In 2011, DC chose to relaunch its titles with new number one issues and a refreshed continuity and called this initiative the New 52. Green Arrow was one of 52 titles included in this. In the post-Flashpoint continuity, Oliver Queen is Green Arrow and he balances his own breaking of laws with his efforts to bring outlaws to justice across the globe. In the new continuity, Queen runs q Core, a communications technology company that is part of Queen Industries, through which he funds and armors himself as Green Arrow. 
He makes scarce allusion to his former partnership with Roy Harper, but Roy's memories in Red Hood and the Outlaws establish that the pair fell out badly, leading Oliver to expel him from Q Corps, as well as prompting Roy's own downward spiral. He is based once again in Seattle and supported in his vigilante activities by a small team of close friends who are tech geniuses. In addition, his romantic history with the Black Canary, his friendship with Green Lantern Hal Jordan, and his being a father to both Connor Hawk and Shadow's son Robert Queen II did not take place as the result of the reboot. The New 52 series was originally written by J.T. Cruel, who was later replaced by Keith Giffen and Dan Jurgens, who were in turn replaced by Anne Nacenti. None of these writers' runs were well received by critics or fans. Beginning with issue 17, the series received a new creative team in writer Jeff Lemire and artist Andrea Sorrentino, who brought more positive reception to the book. Lemire's story introduces new mysteries concerning Oliver's original time on the island where he was shipwrecked, as well as a central mythology concerning the ancient Arrow clan and several other weapon-themed analogues to the Arrow, known as the Outsiders. New antagonists include Komodo, who Oliver learns was his father's archer apprentice and apparent murderer. It has also seen the new 52 debut of several characters, such as Count Vertigo, Shadow, the Clock King, Richard Dragon, as well as John Diggle, a character originally created for the TV series Arrow. When Oliver meets Shadow, he learns she had a daughter from Oliver's father, Robert Queen, named Amiko, whom Komodo has raised as his own daughter. When Oliver returns to the island as part of his investigation into the Outsiders, and in search of a relic known as the Green Arrow, he discovers that his father had survived to the present, and disguised as one of Oliver's torturers on the island, he manipulated Oliver's time there, culminating in Oliver's transformation into the warrior he is today and the hero known as Green Arrow. Disgusted at this revelation, and taking the arrow relic with him, Oliver leaves Shadow and his father behind, stranded on the island, before returning to America to take down the outsiders. Shadow and Robert followed Oliver to Prague, and Amiko turned against Komodo after learning the truth of her parentage. Robert was killed by Komodo in an attempt to save his daughter, and Komodo was later killed himself by Amiko. From 2013, DC also chose to include Green Arrow as a headlining character in its Justice League of America volume. Three series, which runs alongside Justice League volume. Two and Justice League Dark. In this book, Queen is part of a crack state-sponsored team assembled by Amanda Waller and Steve Trevor of ARG US to bring in good PR for the US government and serve as a defense against the independent Justice League headed by Superman and Batman should they ever go rogue. Following the cancellation of JLA at the conclusion of the Forever Evil storyline, Green Arrow appears in its replacement series, Justice League United, also written by Lemire. On July 3, 2014, it was announced that Lemire and Sorrentino would be leaving Green Arrow after issue 34, to be replaced by writers Andrew Kreisberg and Ben Sokolovsky, and artist Daniel Sampier. Kreisberg is the executive producer of Arrow, and Sokolovsky serves as a writer for the show. Kreisberg and Sokolowski's first issue features the new 52 debuts of Felicity Smoke and Mia Dearden. 
Kreisberg's run sees him face off against the influential magnate John King, who is Mia's father, and his hired gun, Merlin. At a moment of desperation given King's infinite resources and litany of loyal subjects, Felicity and Diggle recruit some of Green Arrow's allies and old enemies to help in the fight, Batman, Arsenal, Amico, Katana, Onyx, Cupid and even Lex Luthor, at that time a Justice League member. Following DC's Convergence storyline in April to May 2015, the title again received a new creative team in writer Ben Percy and artist Patrick Zercher, whose run was more influenced by the horror genre. Elements from Arrow were removed, and characters created by Lemire, such as Amico and Henry Fyff, were restored to major roles. Percy's first arc depicts Green Arrow confronting a racist serial killer using drone-like security technology in Seattle to systematically target criminals and potential criminals based on computer profiling and police data. Topic: <laughs> DC Rebirth In 2016, DC relaunched its entire line of titles once again with the DC Rebirth event, this time intending to restore elements from the DC Universe prior to Flashpoint, while also maintaining the continuity of the new 52. Ben Percy remained the principal writer for the series, with a rotating art team consisting of Otto Schmidt, Juan Ferreira and Stephen Byrne. During this run, Green Arrow is seemingly betrayed by Amico as Percy reintroduces Shadow, echoing elements from the Grell run, as well as John Diggle. In addition to restoring Green Arrow's trademark Van Dyke beard, the series revisited a romance between Green Arrow and Black Canary for the first time since 2011. Percy also re-established Green Arrow as a politically conscious figure, with the writer describing him as a "...social justice warrior." After it was revealed that Amico was still on Oliver's side, she eventually adopted the codename of Red Arrow. This volume has been confirmed to be ending in March 2019, with issue 50 as the final issue, which will be an extra sized issue. Topic: <laughs> Supporting characters. As with other DC superheroes, Green Arrow has an extensive supporting cast of characters, sometimes called Team Arrow, along with a unique rogues gallery of villains. His supporting cast has changed wildly over the course of the series, but has tended to include his sidekick Speedy, Roy Harper and Mia Dearden, and his fellow superhero and main romantic interest, Black Canary. His son Connor Hawk has also been a part of the Arrow Vigilante family, along with Black Canary's adopted daughter Sin. For a brief time, Green Arrow was also assisted by the aspiring superhero Miss Arrowette, with whom he had a brief affair. The new 52 reboot of Green Arrow has also introduced a number of new supporting characters for Oliver, including ex-Queen Industries technology experts Naomi Singh and Henry Fyff, and his archer half-sister Amiko Queen who later takes up the code name Red Arrow. The characters of Felicity Smoke and John Diggle from the Arrow TV series were also adapted into the comic books in 2015, though Felicity was later removed from the continuity. The Archer Shadow, though not part of Oliver's unit of heroes, has also been a recurring character in Oliver's life. 
Additionally, Green Arrow has been regularly paired with his fellow superhero Green Lantern Hal Jordan in comics, as the two co-starred in the series Green Lantern, Green Arrow together for many years. As a Justice League member, Green Arrow will also appear in crossovers with stories featuring other DC flagship characters from time to time. Of his Justice League colleagues, classic stories depict Ollie as having an ongoing feud with Hawkman owing to their differing outlooks on life, and more recently, he has been depicted as a good friend of his Justice League United colleague Animal Man. Green Arrow has also been a member of The Outsiders, both in its incarnation as a covert superhero team led by Batman and in its new 52 form as a secret society based around various weapon clans, including an Arrow clan which Oliver is the rightful head of. In the golden age of comic books, Green Arrow and Speedy were also affiliated with the superhero group The Seven Soldiers of Victory. Recurring Green Arrow villains of course include his archenemies Merlin, a master archer, and Count Vertigo, a foreign dignitary with the power to disrupt his enemy's balance and perception. Other recurring villains have included China White, Clock King, Cupid, Brick, and Constantine Dracon. Since the 2000s, the long-standing DC supervillain Deathstroke has often been depicted as having a particular grudge against Green Arrow. Topic: Other versions. Topic. Crisis on Infinite Earths and Death of Golden Age Green Arrow For many years, DC Comics wrote stories in what it called a multiverse, or a series of infinite parallel Earths. This allowed DC writers to freely retcon and retell stories, as well as explain continuity mistakes. The Green Arrow of the 1940s, like all Golden Age characters at that time, resided on Earth 2, and was a member of the Seven Soldiers of Victory and All-Star Squadron along with his sidekick Speedy. Despite having a different origin than the modern Green Arrow, the Golden Age character's development largely parallels the modern ones. The Golden Age Green Arrow perished during DC's landmark event Crisis on Infinite Earths, which destroyed all the planets of the multiverse and rebooted the DC Universe with a single Earth. <laughs> Modern DC alternate universes DC's weekly series 52 established a new 52 Earth multiverse. The ongoing series Countdown showcased several of these. On Earth 3, an evil equivalent of Green Arrow is a member of the supervillain co-op called the Crime Society of America. Another evil equivalent exists in the antimatter universe called Dead Eye. On Earth-15, Roy Harper has replaced Oliver as Green Arrow. In the gender-reversed world of Earth-11, Oliver is now Olivia Queen, and that world's version of the Black Canary closely resembles him in appearance. The Kingdom Come Earth-22 and Dark Knight Returns Earth-31 stories and their variations of Oliver were later amalgamated into the 52 Earth multiverse. In the alternate timeline of the Flashpoint event, Oliver Queen is the head of Green Arrow Industries, a major military contracting company, as well as leads an ex-military band of Green Arrows. 
Even though Oliver is an inventive genius, he steals advanced gadgets from super villains for military use. In one day, Oliver discovers his green arrows were killed by a female raider. Taking his weapons and gadgets to hunt down the woman in battle, Oliver shockingly learns that she is a daughter of his and Vixen, Oliver's former lover, as well as the reason she attacked him was because Green Arrow Industries built factories which specializing in testing super-villain weapons in American towns that inadvertently became targets for the super-villains looking to gain their weapons back. Shocked by her revelation, Oliver had only been stalling before his daughter is killed by his reserve teams he earlier called. In Frank Miller's work The character appears in Frank Miller's Batman, The Dark Knight Returns and the sequel Batman, The Dark Knight Strikes Again. Despite missing an arm implied to be because of Superman, Oliver still proves to be an effective archer he grasps the knocks of his arrows in his teeth. The Emerald Archer later acquires a cybernetic replacement for his lost arm from Batman in the sequel and there was an action figure made with his missing arm in the box. In The Dark Knight Returns, Queen is portrayed as an anarchist, while in The Dark Knight Strikes Again, he is explicitly described as a billionaire turned communist. Topic. Other DC Elseworlds stories In JLA, The Nail and its sequel, Oliver is a featured as a crippled ex-hero, having lost an arm, an eye, and the use of his legs in a fight with Amazo, which also resulted in the death of Hawkman. Bitter and furious, he is now wheelchair-bound and spreads fear on Perry White's talk show about the JLA being aliens and claims that they are planning to conquer the world. His former teammates speculate that this is his method of coping. In the sequel, Oliver's brain is transplanted into Amazo's body, the Flash having removed Amazo's computerized brain in an earlier fight, restoring his sanity, allowing him to defeat the creature threatening the universe at the cost of his own life, after mending fences with his former teammates. In Batman, Holy Terror, Oliver Queen is mentioned as having been executed, found guilty of supporting underground Jewish pornographers. He has a cameo as Bruce Wayne's society friend in Dean Motter's Batman, Nine Lives. Oliver Queen also appears in Mike Magnola's Batman, The Doom That Came to Gotham, where he is portrayed as a Latter-day Templar equipped with magic arrows dipped in the blood of Saint Sebastian. He is killed in issue number two by Poison Ivy. An older, balding green arrow appears in Mark Wade and Alex Ross's futuristic Kingdom Come, in which Oliver has joined forces with Batman to oppose Superman's army. He married his longtime love Dinah Lance and they have a daughter, Olivia Queen. Green Arrow appears in League of Justice, a The Lord of the Rings-inspired fantasy where the character is renamed Longbow Green Arrow, a mysterious wizard resembling Gandalf. JLA, Age of Wonder shows Green Arrow as a defender of the poor and an enemy of oppression. Topic. And Justice series 
in the Injustice universe, where the Joker kills Lois Lane and her unborn child, driving Superman to autocratic madness, Green Arrow joins Batman's insurgency against Superman's regime, recognizing the corrupt Man of Steel's harsher approach to ending crime. In Injustice, God's Among Us, he is in a romantic relationship with Black Canary revealed later as also his wife and also unintentionally becomes close to Harley Quinn, who he saves from a near-death encounter with Superman. Near the end of Year One, the comic's first volume, he is beaten to death by Superman in his fortress of solitude after the former mistakenly believes that the insurgency has come to harm his adopted parents kept there, though in reality it was a botched attempt to gain a super pill meant to give humans great power. With his final action, Oliver is able to use an arrow to deliver the super pill to the insurgency so that the mission was not in vain. Year Two reveals Canary to be pregnant with Oliver's child, leaving her determined to take down Superman for his murder. When Superman nearly kills her, Dr. Fate heals and takes Dinah to an alternate universe where a different version of Oliver Queen remains alive but his own Black Canary is deceased. Dr. Fate leaves the two to raise the baby—named Connor—together, giving each other a chance at happiness. Five years later, in the prequel comic of the game's sequel Injustice 2, alternate Oliver and Dinah receive news from Dr. Fate of Superman's defeat at the hands of his Prime Earth counterpart. While Dinah is brought home by Dr. Fate to help Batman restore Earth, the Prime Earth Oliver joins in to honor his late counterpart who was murdered by Superman five years ago. The Prime Earth Oliver discovers that, unlike himself, his deceased counterpart maintained his wealth and resources, and with the public is unaware that its Oliver Queen is dead, the Prime Earth Green Arrow is able to access them for the hero's needs. He learns his counterpart's marriage to Dinah, prompting her to ask the Prime Earth Green Arrow his hand in marriage, which he accepts. He and Batman also do not get along, waiting for an opportunity to duel after Oliver reveals that, based on what he learned from Dinah, he has more trainings than his counterparts. Topic. Superman, American Alien In the 2016 comic book, which features an alternate retelling of Clark's journey to becoming Superman, Oliver Queen encounters Clark Kent two times in his life. First is when Clark was 19 and Oliver mistakes him for Bruce Wayne, whom he had thrown a birthday party for despite being aware that Wayne would never show up. Clark, after some hesitation, decides to enjoy himself and befriends Oliver, though he briefly becomes annoyed and shocked at how much money Oliver and his friends waste. Years later, after getting off Starfish Island, Oliver has matured more and encounters Clark again, who has begun his new career at the Daily Planet. At first believing him to be Bruce, Clark quickly comes clean. Oliver forgives him before introducing him to Lex Luthor, partly to annoy the latter. Topic. Collected editions The trade paperback edition of The Archer's Quest hash 16 to 21 was released as volume 4 in the series after Straight Shooter hash 26 to 31 was released as volume 3. The hardcover editions of Quiver, The Sounds of Violence, as well as The Archer's Quest were never numbered. 
The hardcover edition of Green Arrow, Black Canary, The Wedding Album was reprinted minus the last two pages of issue number 5. Topic. In other media Topic. Smallville Justin Hartley portrayed Oliver Queen, Green Arrow in Smallville, and is first introduced in the season 6 episode, Sneeze. The character starts off as a recurring character who is already an established vigilante in his home of Star City, and is originally paired with Lois Lane in a romantic storyline. After a rough start, he becomes a trusted ally and friend of Clark Kent. Green Arrow retains his many unique arrows and demonstrates expert archery skill, along with skilled use of a crossbow with many trick arrows. In the episode, Justice, Oliver teams up with Clark to put an end to Lex Luthor's experimentation with supervillains by teaming up with other superheroes Clark has met on his journeys, forming a prototypical Justice League. Oliver is seen again in Season 7 for the episode, Siren in which he continues his fight against Luthercorp and meets another superhero, Black Canary, whom he recruits for his Justice League. In a flashback sequence in the Season 7 episode, Veritas, a young version of Oliver Queen can be seen being played by Luke Gare. From season 8 through season 10, Hartley is a series regular, and is woven into the backstory of Smallville through the Queen's business connections with the Luther, Teague, and Swan families. Oliver was a childhood friend and schoolmate, and later a teenage bully, of Lex Luthor. In the season 8 episode, Requiem, Oliver risks his friendship with Clark by killing Lex, something which Clark would never support. Over the course of the series, Oliver and Clark become increasingly close friends and they establish themselves full time as superheroes, working with other members of the Justice League when required. Oliver later becomes romantically involved with Clark's best friend, Lois's cousin Chloe Sullivan, whom he ultimately marries. In the series finale, Oliver serves as the best man at Clark and Lois' wedding service, and Chloe is shown to have a son in the future, who is implied to be Oliver's. Smallville Season 11, a comic book continuation of the show, reveals he is Oliver's son, Jonathan Queen, named after Clark's adoptive father. Topic. Arrowverse Topic. Arrow On January 18, 2012, the CW Green lit a pilot for a proposed Green Arrow series with Greg Berlanti, Mark Guggenheim and Andrew Kreisberg producing. The series, Arrow, offers a fresh take on the character, and initially does not feature superpowers, as a way to take a realistic look at the characters in this universe. In addition to being the vigilante archer the series also features flashbacks to Oliver's time on the island and the events that shaped him into the hero in the present. Andrew Kreisberg explained that, We designed Oliver as a character a little more tortured than the comic series Green Arrow. Stephen Amell portrays Oliver Queen in the series. It premiered in North America on October 10, 2012, and was picked up for a full season later that month. 
On February 11, 2013, Arrow was renewed for a second season, which premiered on October 9, 2013. On February 13, 2014, The CW renewed the series for a third season, which premiered on October 8, 2014. On January 11, 2015, Arrow was renewed for a 23-episode fourth season, which has premiered on October 7, 2015. Unlike in the comic books, Queen does not go by the alias. Green Arrow, until the fourth season. In the first season, he is called the Hood, and during the second and third seasons, he re dubs himself the Arrow until Ra's al Ghul's monomania in trying to get him to be his successor forces Roy Harper to take the fall as being the Arrow to save Oliver from the police. On January 8, 2017, The CW renewed the show for a sixth season, in which its storyline deals with his careers, marriage, fatherhood, and feud with crime lord Ricardo Diaz. On April 2, 2018, The CW renewed the show for a seventh season, with a new storyline involving Oliver being incarcerated after being outed as Green Arrow. In addition to his old enemies seeking revenge against him now that they know who he is and continued feud with Diaz, Oliver deals with a mysterious archer who has usurped the Green Arrow name and has skills and tactics eerily match his own. Topic: The Flash Oliver Queen has made multiple appearances in the Arrowverse series The Flash, once again played by Stephen Amell. In the pilot, Barry Allen returns to Starling City after gaining super speed and receives advice from Oliver about whether he could be a hero or just some guy who was struck by lightning. A promo depicts a sequence in which Oliver is training an in-costume Barry. The shows and the characters have crossovers with each other mid-season, including Felicity Smoke visiting Central City to help Barry deal with the new threat of Leonard Snart's stolen cold gun, followed shortly after by a two-parter where Oliver fights Barry after a mood-controlling metahuman provokes Barry into attacking his allies in Flash vs. Arrow and Barry assisting Oliver in catching new foe Captain Boomerang in The Brave and the Bold. In All-Star Team Up, Ray Palmer and Felicity visit STAR Labs to get help for Ray's Atom suit, and assist the team in defeating a supervillain who can control robotic bees. Oliver appears in the penultimate episode. Rogue Air, to help Barry fight the reverse flash with Firestorm, using nanite enhanced arrows from Ray Palmer to slow reverse flash down and knock him out. In return, he asks for Barry's help in freeing his friends in the season 3 arrow finale. In two part crossover that will set the events to Legends of Tomorrow, Oliver and his comrades team up with Barry, Kendra Saunders, and Carter Hall to defeat immortal villain, Vandal Savage. During the season 2 episode, Enter Zoom, a news report shows that on Earth 2, Oliver died the night the Queen's Gambit sunk, and his father Robert took the mantle of the Arrow. However, Robert was somehow unmasked in this reality. In the mass crossover episode, Invasion, featuring the casts of Arrow, The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow teaming up with Supergirl to stop an alien invasion by the Dominators, Oliver nominates Barry for team leader while acting as a tactical advisor to the team.
Topic: <laughs> Vixen. Queen appears in the animated web series Vixen, also voiced by Stephen Amell. Topic: <laughs> DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Oliver appears in DC's Legends of Tomorrow, once again portrayed by Stephen Amell. He first appears in Pilot, Part 1, where he enlists Ray to sneak into a HIVE facility to analyze a stolen prototype computer. Later Ray assists Oliver as he engages several HIVE soldiers to inform him of Rip Hunter's offer to accompany him on a mission throughout time to stop Vandal Savage, along with Sarah Lance, Kendra, Carter, Professor Martin Stein, Jefferson Jackson, Leonard Snart and Mick Rory. Though Oliver is suspicious of Rip's motives he encourages Ray to join his mission but reminds him to stay vigilant. Oliver reappears in Star City 2046 where in an alternate future where Ray and Sarah never returned Star City was attacked by Grant Wilson, Deathstroke, son and successor of Slade Wilson, and his own army of Mirakuru soldiers in 2031. John Diggle and Captain Quentin Lance were killed, Felicity left and Laurel Lance and Thea Queen were implied to have been killed also. Oliver has lost his left arm to Grant during a fight, no longer in his physical prime due to age, and was exposed as Green Arrow. Following this Oliver fled into hiding and was believed dead and Diggle's son, John Diggle Jr. who out of guilt for failing to save his father renamed himself Connor Hawk, took up the Green Arrow mantle. In 2046, Oliver is discovered alive by Connor, Sarah, and Rip while searching for a component for their ship. After Connor is captured, Oliver reluctantly agrees to aid Sarah in rescuing him and returns as Green Arrow, utilizing a cybernetic prosthesis, and defeats Grant with his successor. As Sarah parts ways back to her mission with her team, Oliver and Connor are last seen repairing their safe house. Rip claims that the timeline is malleable, and thus this dystopian future may never occur once Sarah and Ray return to their present with this knowledge. In Season 2, Oliver aided Nathan Haywood to locate the Legends location and located the Waverider. Oliver would later appear in the annual crossover, Invasion, where he joins all of the Arrowverse heroes to fight against the Dominators. Joseph David Jones portrays Connor Hawk, Green Arrow, born as John Diggle Jr. Connor takes up the Green Arrow mantle in the potential Star City of 2046 after the supposed death of Oliver Queen. Topic: <laughs> Supergirl Oliver appears in Supergirl, once again portrayed by Stephen Amell. He appears in the first crossover episode, Crisis on Earth X, attending Barry Allen's wedding. Amell also portrayed Oliver's fascistic parallel universe doppelganger from Earth X, Dark Arrow. Dark Arrow is also married to Overgirl, Supergirl's Earth X doppelganger, who shares her husband's ambitions against parallel Earths. In the crossover, due to his doppelganger as leading the invasion, Oliver leads his world, Earth 38, and Earth X's heroes to counter the New Reich's effort against the multiverse. Topic. See also List of Green Arrow comics